da 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 Do you want to be a geographic kid? Would you like to know the things the tiger did? Count the stripes upon a zebra Watch an ostrich Meet a cheetah You've just got, got to be a geographic kid See koala climb a tree While the whale swim in the sea Float with the sea after Watch the lizard cross the water There he go <laughs> It's fun to travel geographic style Warren greet the dolphins in the wild Flamingo take a flapping The great big cat is napping Did you see that hippo's mouth? I think he smiled at you. <laughs> Join the Geo Kids and you'll be smiling too. Sonny said you might be dropping in. Uh, she did? How'd you know that? Why, that Sonny's a smart honey possum, you know. I'll say. Sometimes too smart for me. I wonder what she's up to. Hey, Sonny, what's up? Oh, the big, beautiful sky, Bobby. That's what. Oh, wouldn't it be great to be up there? Oh, you mean like a cloud? Huh? -uh. Like a bird. Oh, <laughs> a bird. Yep. What? Sounds like fun to me. <laughs> we reptiles are related to the birds, you know. <gasps> we are. Not bush babies, Bobby. Reptiles. Lizards, snakes, turtles, you know. You mean you can fly, Uncle Balzac? <laughs> Afraid not, Bobby. Whoa. Gee, I wonder what it would be like to be way up there, floating and flapping and looking down on everything. <gasps> Bush Baby's gonna jump real high. Does that count? Bobby, jumping is just jumping. Uh, flying is flying. You can say that again, Sonny. Nothing quite as beautiful as a flying bird. Even those funny-looking flamingos standing around over there. Huh? <gasps> oh. Feathery flamingos in a flock, like a fluffy cloud of pink. With long, thin necks and bills of black, they bathe and take a drink. They fly across the lake so blue, so many of them to see. They flutter and they flap their wings and glide so gracefully. They use their spindly legs to move across the ground. But when they walk, their legs bend backward. That's how they get around. Sometimes when they're standing still, one leg will do the trick. Pretty pink birds in the sun like cotton candy on a stick. They walk together to the left, then sometimes to the right. But when a hyena comes around, flamingos take off in flight. Oh. Gosh, flamingos are beautiful. Sure are, aren't we? Huh? What? <laughs> Here we go again, Uncle Balzac. <laughs> Flamingo in a tree so tall. Spread your wings and head for a... <laughs> for a... <laughs> Fall. Hmm. Oh, Bobby. <laughs> well, boy, this flamingo business is tougher than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 
What's this thing? Alphabet rock. Letter F. What's it for? Makes a fu sound. You know, like fu fu flamingo. And fu feathers, like the ones all over Bobby. Ha, very fu funny. Ha, uh -oh. hey, and fu fell. I'll say. And fu far, too. Yeah. Too bad it couldn't fu fly. <laughs> Yep, like our for fine for feathered for friends the birds. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean? What? Little lizard humor. <laughs> Parrots are squawky birds. Red, yellow, blue, green. Prettiest birds you've ever seen. In the trees or taking flight, they even come in black and white. This pretty parrot flies home to see her babies nestled in a tree. Though only a few weeks old, already they are bright and bold. Red, yellow, blue, green. Parrots use their beaks to preen. Preening is what all birds do. Fluff old feathers to make them look new. Their beaks can crack the hardest shell of nuts that parrots like so well. Not only are they used for power, but also to gently dine on a flower, or feed their children just like this, or even to give their mate a kiss. Red, yellow, blue, green, prettiest birds you've ever seen. On the ground or in the sky, a parrot treat for anyone's eye. Francisco Flamingo here, and it's time for another fantastic Flamingo. 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 Flamingo fact. Sorry about that. Whew. These feathers make me sneeze. Now for that Flamingo fact. Today we're going to talk about animal groups. And a group is what you call a bunch of animals when they get together. Fish you swim together are sometimes called a school. Schools of fish swim everywhere. In oceans, lakes, and pools. Great big cows, brown, black, or white, wander in a herd. Geese on the ground are called a gaggle. That's a funny word. Birds of a feather move together, flying in a flock. You can see them near the water, in the air, on sand, or rocks. Let's name the groups we've heard. A group of fishes, a school. A bunch of cows, a herd. Waddling geese, a gaggle. A group of birds is called a flock. So there you have it, another fascinating flamingo fact from me, Francisco Flemi. Ready? Francisco Flamingo! And now, back to... <laughs> back to... <laughs> Let you kids! It's been a tough morning being born on the plains of Africa for little Hillary Hippo here, but that's not all. Little Hillary has to learn to get up and walk today, too. Being a baby hippo is a big job. Little Hillary would like to keep up with her mom, but that baby hippo skin of hers doesn't seem to fit too well yet, does it? And this learning to walk business can make you look, well, pretty clumsy. That a girl. Come on, Mom, wait up. Steady. All right. Here comes Hillary Hippo, Hippo hopping along. Now she's got the hang of it. Next on the schedule, swimming. Maybe. And now it's time for animal doo-wop. Duck, frog, duck, frog, duck, beaver, duck, 
f f frog k k koala bubble beaver the duck f f f frog k k koala animal names like beaver frog and duck all begin with letters like d which starts the duck if you repeat that sound just before you sing the name soon animal do what will be your favorite game come on beaver duck f f f frog duck koala beaver duck f f f frog duck koala beaver duck f f f frog duck koala beaver duck f f f frog Cuck a koala, bubba beaver, da duck, f f f frog, cuck a koala, bubba beaver. Ants are crawling and they crawl around everywhere. Marching across the forest floor with leaves above their heads, meet the hard-working leafcutter ants who seldom go to bed. The reason why they work so hard is because they're never done cutting leaves and bringing them home to take care of their young. They cut and prune just certain trees of every leaf they possess. When leaf cutter ants have left the scene, they never leave a mess. They carry each and every piece back home and down below where hungry little baby ants await the food they'll grow. They grind up all the leafy stuff and chew it to a paste, which grows the food that feeds the ants. Nothing goes to waste. Very soon, it's back to work to find another tree to cut out pieces from the leaves. It's quite a sight to see. Whew! I did not know that. Did you? If I tried really, really hard, I could ever fly like a bird? Afraid not, Sonny. But no bird will ever learn to be a honey possum either. But they won't want to be a honey possum. And I really want to learn to fly. Uh, uh, so did I, Sonny. Take it from me. It's no picnic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not that easy for baby birds either, you know. It isn't. Gee. How do baby birds learn to fly? Yeah. Well, take that beautiful harpy eagle we just saw. <gasps> Is that what that was? Uh-huh. Oh. Wow. Once upon a time, there lived a harpy eagle named Helen. She and Harry the harpy eagle were the most powerful flyers in the rainforest. Someone very special to Helen and Harry lived in a nest high up in a tree. It was their new little son, Henry the Harpy Eagle. Mother Helen stayed close to the nest and tried to make sure her little son was safe and comfortable every day. She even brought fresh branches to help keep his nest fluffy and clean. When Henry the Harpy Eagle was hungry, Helen would call out to Henry's father, Harry. Harry would soon arrive at the Harpy home with fresh meat for his growing son, who was already beginning to think about flying. Henry flapped and flapped as he grew and grew, but his little wings just weren't ready. Within a few months, Henry the Harpy Eagle was much bigger and he had much stronger wings. Now he really wanted to fly. One day, young Henry discovered his wings could lift him into the air. Henry tested this idea over and over. Finally, Henry took his first incredible flight all the way across the tree. He could fly, 
which made Henry one very, very happy harpy eagle. We're gonna count to ten now. Geographic style. Geographic style. We're gonna count the creatures. creatures. Gonna make us smile. Gonna make us smile. We do it all together. together. Oh, one by one. One by one. Anyway, we do it. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Here we go now. One stingray, two heavy hippos, three spotted deer, four lost sheep, five meerkats, six red frogs, seven little birds, eight flamingos, nine springbuck, ten flying swans. All the different animals do the number dance. Now we did the counting, counting. from one to ten. From one to ten. We're getting so excited. excited. Gonna do it again. Gonna do it again. You can count the creatures. creatures. Anywhere you go. Anywhere you go. Look for them in numbers. numbers. Find the ones you know. One stingray, two hippos, three spotted deer, four sheep, five meerkats, six red frogs, seven little birds, eight flamingos, nine springbok, ten flying swans. Anytime you get the chance. What lovely flying birds are these? So pure and white and free. Like ballerinas in the sky, dancing gracefully. These elegant birds are tundra swans with necks so long and thin. Twice a year they fly far away. Here's how their journey begins. The swans collect in enormous flocks with families and their mates. When spring arrives, they gather near on this coast to watch and wait. They use this time to build their strength. They eat and rest and roam. When the wind is right, the swans take flight, flying north toward their summer home. They fly without stopping for so many miles, flapping their wings with such ease. The sound of the flock helps them stay together. You can hear them call in the breeze. We interrupt these flying swans to bring you a special message about noses. Big nose, small nose, noses in between. Some are next to whiskers, some are hardly seen. Some are long and some can bend, some are very short. Some are used like hoses, some just sniff and snort. Fat nose, round nose, a nose that is a flap. Little teeny tiny holes, and noses that are flat. Many animals have noses, through which they breathe and smell the scents of many things around the places where they dwell. Noses. Don't leave home without one. <laughs> Gesundheit. Excuse me. And now, back to those flying swans. When the swans finally reach their home in the north, a place so lovely and grand, they join many other wild creatures who live on this beautiful land. In the warmth of summer, the cygnets are born. That's what you call baby swans. The cygnets follow their parents around on the waters which they live upon. In the fall, when it starts to get chilly, the swans make a plan to fly south. For the north gets too cold in the winter, if they stayed, they would freeze without doubt. They spread their wings wide and take to the sky, flying south to where they began. But when winter is over, you can be sure they'll return to the north once again. Fifth. 
feathers. We could be up there right now, flying with that bird. I know we could, Bobby. Ah, uh, wait a minute, Sonny. I have feathers and I fell like a rock. I don't think this flying deal has anything to do with feathers. It doesn't. Uh-uh. It's beaks. It is? Yeah. I've been watching birds all day. They all have beaks and they all fly. So... What about wings? Uh, what? Huh? Birds can fly because they have wings, Bobby, not beaks. Well, that was my next guess. <laughs> Birds eat with their beaks. They fly with their wings. Oh. oh, all birds can fly because they have wings. Right, Uncle Balzac? Nope. Not all birds can fly, Bobby. They can't? What do you mean? Well, take penguins, for instance. Oh. Down by the South Pole, near the Southern Sea, icebergs rise up, tall as they can be. Living in their shadow, dressed in black and white, we find a group of special birds who never can take flight. With stubby feet and short, stout legs, beaks which seem to grin, this funny bird with smooth feathers is called the penguin. Penguins walk across the ice or stand up straight and tall, like groups of happy diplomats going to a ball. They gather in the thousands in groups called colonies, yet somehow in this sea of birds they find their families. When the penguins leave the shore and frolic in the ocean, they splash and die between the waves in lovely penguin motion. They shoot out of the water with such amazing grace, yet once upon the rocky shore, waddling is their pace. Sometimes certain penguins leave the massive crowd. They wander off to find a place where things are not so loud. They stand upon the floating ice and look out to the sea like a captain of a penguin ship sailing wild and free. Who's that? And now it's time for Who's That, Who's that Living in the Water? Who's that? Swimming in the water. Living in the sea Who's that funny looking creature I wonder what its funny name could be Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Starfish live beneath the sea upon the ocean floor, or sometimes you can see them sitting by the shore. They never seem to do much because they're very slow, but if you speed up what they do, it's fun to watch them go. Remember what you know. Starfish eat, play, and dance. They're just very, very slow. That's who's swimming in the water. That's who's living in the sea. Such a funny looking creature. Surely doesn't look like you or me. are big and they have long noses. The first
first time you see an elephant, it's quite a sight to behold. Besides its size, this animal has a nose that can unfold. It's called a trunk. It's very long and used in many ways. A trunk can wiggle, bend and twist. Watch it as it sways. An elephant often uses its trunk as if it were a hose. The elephant can quench its thirst by drinking with its nose. They also use that trunk to bathe just like a shower head. When they're hungry, watch those trunks. They use them to get fed. Elephants can use their trunks to see who's toughest, too, or to touch a friend and say, hello, how do you do? A trunk is used in many ways, even to knock down a tree, or to blow, or touch, or take a drink. That trunk's a sight to see. And now, kids, something... <laughs> Gee whiz, I guess you're never gonna get to fly, huh, Sonny? Oh, I can fly anytime I want to, Bobby. You can? Sure. I just picture it in my head, like a dream. Really? Uh-huh. flying with you on that one. Uh -huh. oh, thanks, Uncle Balzac. Say, did I ever tell you kids about the time I fell off a baobab tree and landed on a sleeping rhinoceros? You no. <laughs> Strangest thing you ever saw. Why, that rhinoceros got up, must have thought I was a meteor or something. Right, Orange? Jump around. Want to be a geographic kid? Would you like to know the things the tiger did? Count the stripes upon a zebra. Watch an ostrich. Meet a cheetah. You just got, got to, to be a geographic kid. See koala climb a tree while the whale swim in the sea. Float with the sea after. Watch the lizard cross the water. 
there he go. It fun to travel geographic style. Go out and greet the dolphins in the wild. Flamingo take a flapping. The great big cat is napping. Did you see that hippo's mouth? I think he smiled at you. <laughs> Join the Geo Kids and you'll be smiling too. <laughs> Kitty, 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 kitty